The title of the message today is What must you do to be a good mother? What must you do to be a good mother? Before we talk about mothers, let's see how the Bible defined a mother. Who is a mother? The book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 12, and the verse is 46 to 50. The word of God says, While Jesus Christ yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand outside, desiring to speak with thee. But Jesus answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand towards his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother, my sister, and my mother. Amen. So, let me repeat myself. Jesus Christ was addressing to the public around. And suddenly, a man came and told Jesus, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside. They desire to speak to you. So, Jesus looked at the man and said, okay, but who is my mother and who, is my, who are my brethren? And he started pointing the disciples, people that were around him, the disciples around him. He said that these are my mothers and these are my brethren, these are my fathers, because these are the ones that are doing my father's will. So clearly defined here, if you want to know what the Bible defined as a mother, a mother is a wife that is doing God's will. A mother is a wife that is doing God's will. Amen? So then, Jesus said that the one that is doing God's will is, is the mother. So, what is God's will for a mother then? In a mother's day, it is important for you, if you have seen yourself now from this definition that you are a mother, then what is God's will for a mother? Let's highlight just few. Number one, God is willing for every mother to build a home for God. God desires that every mother builds a home for him. So the question is, how are you building your home? How are you building your home? Well, God has certain criteria, certain desires, certain expectations from every mother in your home. God has desires, expectations, because that is his will. He wants to see the relationship between the husband and wife being well. So he has a word for that. Ephesians chapter 5 and the verses 21 to 23. The word of God tells us, he said that, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So a godly home is a home where the husband is submitted to the wife. And the wife is also submitted to the husband. Because he said submit yourselves to one another. So it is not just the woman submitting herself to the husband. The husband also has to submit yourself to your wife. It is God's will. Verse 22, he said, Wives, 
Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Wives, clearly, submit yourselves unto your husbands. Because there is a relationship between your fellowship with your husband and the fellowship to the church. As Christ had that fellowship to the church. So there is, there is a comparison here between Christ's relationship to the church and then the wife's relationship to the husband at home. What does it mean? It means that there is no way that a church will be a church if the people in the church, the mothers in the church, the fathers in the church are not fulfilling their responsibilities at home. No way. It is God's will that these things be done in orderly. It is not, you know, that we can do whatever that we want to do at home and come to church and play holy. The two go together. If you are a woman here and your husband is not happy because of your relationship, you need to pray that the Lord God help you to turn things around because it is his will that these things are in place. That was from the woman to the men. Now, husband's and wife's relationship to the church. That is what we just said. You cannot conduct yourself anyhow and come play holy in the church. Ephesians 5, 21 to 25, at least the verse 24 says, he said, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Everything has to be centered on love. Everything. You know, we have been taught so much about because of our traditions and all that. Let me tell you, the word of God breaks every tradition. The word of God supersedes every tradition. Anything that is of man is under the word of God. We obey the word of God before our traditions. A woman that is not, you know, a man that will stand out there and say that, oh, according to our tradition, this is what you're supposed to do. You are not uh, to tell me this and that. No, it's not about that. As a woman of God, as a mother, your responsibility to your husband, it is not about the tradition. But it is because you are in the, in the midst of a covenant. Marriage itself is a covenant and it is not a man's covenant. It is God's covenant. You know what it means? It means that God is in the center of your relationship to your husband. God is in the center of your relationship to your wife. So when you are not submitting to your husband, or when you are disrespecting your, your wife, let me tell you, it is not about the woman. It is all about God. The nasty things that you say to your husband, the nasty things that you are saying to your wife, matter of fact, Jesus Christ is the one receiving them first before he reaches your husband or your wife. Submitting yourselves one to another. Loving your wife's husbands. When the love is there, someone came to me yesterday and I was... Uh, you know, in counseling, and we were talking about these things. I said, I said, my husband is not, my husband is not, my husband is not. I said, okay, fine. He is not, but you are here. We thank God. He might not know, but you know. You are receiving the word of God. So the first thing that we are going to do to solve issues is that we're going to work you out. We have to make sure that you as a mother, your relationship with God is right. You as a wife, your relationship with God is right. We are already on halfway. 
halfway result. Why? Because now God is going to work on you. And if God is working on you, you are doing your part as a mother. You are doing your part as a husband. Let me tell you, the other side is God's problem. The other side is God's problem. But if you stand out there and you are constantly blaming your husband and say that the husband is not this, the husband is not that, so you are not fulfilling your part of the covenant, you have a problem with God. God does not have any problem with your husband because before God can touch your husband, God wants to see that your relationship as a wife to God is right. That's the way it works. So when we are in a relationship and we are blaming each other, we have to start seeing the word of God in the covenant that we are in. Then from, 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 from there, we will see if everyone is fulfilling his part. It's not about your wife. It's not about your husband. It's about you and your God. It's about you, a man and your God. It's about you, a woman and your God. When your relationship is right with God, your husband will be very happy. When your relationship is right with God, your wife will be very happy. And you will have a happy marriage. Submitting yourself to each other does not mean that you have become slaves. In the term of the world, the Lord wants to see us being slaves to each other. Servants. We serve. That's the purpose of a slave. If you cannot serve your husband, you cannot serve your wife, then you are not fulfilling God's mandate. It is only love that binds in our marriage. Because God is love, and if God is the one that is the binding glue between these two people, then only love, God, can sustain a marriage. Who is the mother? Well, it is very interesting because in the book of uh, Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 3 and the verses 1 to 7, if you are not fulfilling your mandate at home and come to church and is willing to occupy leadership in the church, you are not fulfilling your duties at home and you want to be an elder in the church. You want to come here and occupy position in the church. It is impossible. Because Christ said that as he is to the church, so you are in your home. So if the relationship is not there in home, you cannot come to the church and rule people. You cannot come here and be a leader. It is clearly said. I'm going to read this from the Message Bible. He said, if anyone wants to provide leadership in the church, good. But there are, there are Preconditions. A leader must be well thought of, committed to his wife. You see that? A leader must be well thought of, committed to his wife, cool and collected, accessible and hospitable. Hospitable. He must know what he is talking about. The man must know what he is talking about. Not be overfond of wine. You see, you go out there, you just drink, 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 drink. You come speaking nonsense to your wife and come to church Sunday. You are not drunk and say that I am a leader. A man that is not pushy, but gentle. There is a way to handle marriage issues. There is a way to conduct, you know, to, 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 to bring solutions to problems at home. A pushy husband, that's not God's need. A pushy wife, God does not need it. A gentle one is the one that the Lord needs. Not money hungry. God says that he wants a husband that is not money hungry. Because if you love money more than your wife, you cannot serve this God. It is simple. The moment that your sweetheart will come and say that, oh, my honey husband, I have just seen uh, Victoria's Secret just release a new, uh, and I want to go and buy. Hey, hey, problem. 
Hey, you don't know how to maintain this, uh, this home. And you are always spending, spending, spending. Meanwhile, when this woman is, uh, is, is outside and she's looking very beautiful and you are walking, say, oh, your, 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 your wife is nice. We thank God. God has blessed us. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You are taking credit for it. But you are not ready because you are money hungry. Stinginess. Money is one of the problems, probably number one problem in a relationship. You have to know how to deal with those things. If not, don't come here and be willing to become a leader. It continues over and over. For the time's sake, you will read it at home. Number two requirement of God's will for a mother is that as God gives you children as gifts, you have to dedicate those children to God. As God gives you children, you have to dedicate those children to God. You know, we have a wonderful story. You know, First Samuel chapter 1 and 2, 3 talks about Samuel. But Samuel's mother, Hannah, this woman, she was buried. And she was found with a concubine. So the husband, Elkanah, was a man with two wives. The man loves Hannah, but Hannah could not bear children. And Penina, the concubine, has children. And you know when two women are in contention. <laughs> eye to eye. <laughs> so, what Hannah was doing... Hannah went before the Lord and prayed. And God answered her prayer. We thank God for God answering prayers. God answered prayers. Any situation, you know, when it is not right in your marriage, go and pray. Go and pray. The Lord answered and gave Samuel to Hannah. And Hannah went back to God. And dedicated that child to Almighty God. So, First Samuel chapter one, verse twenty-seven and twenty-eight. Hannah said, "For this child I prayed, and the Lord had given me my petition, which I asked of Him. That is answer prayer. Therefore, also I have lent him to the Lord. Simple. I prayed, God answered me. I gave him back." To God. When the Lord gives you children, those children, it is God's will for you to dedicate them back to him. Amen? In the case of Samuel, Samuel was a prophet to God. You know, let me tell you, the moment that that child has come under the umbrella of Christ, the purpose of that child is in God's hand. Now the person is dedicated to God, he is a God, he's God's property. And don't mess up with God's property. Because he will mess you up. Amen. You want wonderful protection. Great protection over your children. All that you do. Make sure you dedicate them. And one thing about God is that. From a woman that was a barren. God did not give. You know many people think that Hannah only had one child. Which was Samuel. No. Hannah didn't have only one child. Samuel had siblings. So first Samuel chapter 2 verse 21. The word of God said. He said the Lord. When the Lord visited Hannah. So that she conceived. And bare three sons and two daughters. Amen. When God opens your womb. The womb is open. Amen. When you pray. And the Lord answered your prayer. Your prayers have been answered. And now the way is paved. For you to move forward. So when God opens the door. No man, no devil, no powers of darkness, close that door. It remains open. Amen. Dedicate your children to God. It's God's will. Those children, they have to also be trained. You have to train those children. It's God's will that you train them. You dedicate them, then training should come forth. 
Because Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, the word of God said, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. You want to see your child doing well, you have to train him or train her the way that you want to see that child to become. You are taking your children to worship idols. When they grow up, they are idol worshippers. That's all that they know. You don't give them the right training, they will grow up to become the opposite of what you desire for them. The role of a mother. So, it was interesting because when Hannah, Hannah had Samuel, and Hannah dedicated Samuel to God, Hannah left Samuel with the man of God, the priest called Eli. And Eli himself was so busy with the things of God that he couldn't even train his children. That's the problem that we are having all the time. Please, busyness in your marriages, business in your homes are not an excuse to overrule God's commandments. God will still ask you that you did not, why you didn't fulfill your responsibility towards these children. It's not because your father is a preacher, your father is a man of God, that automatically you are a child of God. It doesn't work that way. Unless you train them to know God, they are not entitled to receive the same anointing, the same blessings. And the proof is right here. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 22 to 24. The word of God says that he said, Eli was very old. And heard all that his sons did unto Israel. And how they lay with the women at the assembly at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. You see that Eli was the priest. His children were all messed up because he was busy and he couldn't train them. And as far as the wife is concerned, the woman is called Belial. You know, listen to what the Bible says about this woman as a mother. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 12. The word of God says that as, as Eli was busy, he said, now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial, the mother. They knew not the Lord, which means that the mother did not train the children to know God. Eli was busy. The wife did not know God and did not train the children to know God. And the result of that, this is what happened. As Eli was old, these children were the one that would come to church and they were raping the woman at the door. <laughs> they were raping the woman. This is... <laughs> so you are... Your, your father is a minister. And you are taking advantage of your father's position to rape the woman in the church. So this is also an, a clear indication that as a mother, when you come to church, you have to know your responsibilities. Fulfill your mandate. Otherwise... A minister's child might rape you if you don't know your God. So tough. It is amazing that a woman will let herself be raped in the congregation, in the midst of the church. All kinds of stuff are going on. You are a woman that is married. You have your husband. You are a man. You are married. You are in a marriage. Be careful. Be careful about what you do. Maybe your husband didn't see you. Maybe your wife did not see you. But let me tell you, there is nothing under the surface of this universe that the eye of the Lord will not behold. He sees everything. You can escape your husband's judgment. You will escape your wife's judgment. You will expect escape the court of this world. But let me tell you, the court of heaven, you will not escape it. Watch what you do as a mother. So Proverbs 29, the verses 15 says that, he said the road and reproof gives wisdom. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. So train those children with the rod. 
Reprove them when they are doing wrong. Tell them that they are doing wrong. They might not be happy. But they will be happy later on when they see how you train them. Otherwise, it will bring you as a mother a shame. There is a wonderful story here, and I'm bringing it to an end. You know, a mother came to Jesus Christ. And this mother trained those children. Because they were disciples of Christ. So, as Jesus was speaking, the mother showed up with his two children. Let me read it quickly. Matthew 20, and the verses 20 to 28. He said, it was about that time that the mother of Zebedee's brothers came with her two sons, James and John, and knelt down before Jesus and request. What do you want? Jesus asked her. She said, give your word that these two sons of mine will award the highest places of honor in your kingdom. One at your right hand and one at your left hand. Jesus responded, you have no idea what you are asking. And he said unto James and John, are you capable of drinking the cup that I am about to drink? And they said, sure, why not? And Jesus said, come to think of it. You are going to drink my cup, but as awarding places of honor, that is not my business. My father is taking care of that. Simply saying that Zebedee's mother, John and James, came with their mother. The mother came before Jesus Christ and told Jesus, he said, Jesus, these two children of mine, they are your disciples. I want you to promise me that you will have one sitting at the right, at your right hand, and the other sitting at your left hand in thy kingdom. And Jesus looked at her and said, that, you don't know what you're talking about. And asked the children, can you drink the cup? Can you go through what I'll be going through? They said, yes. He said, okay. I understand that. But the place of honor in my right hand or in my left hand does not belong to me. It belongs to my father. When you continue the story, this is, the Bible is clear about this. You see, the mother desired good things for the children. What about the rest of the disciples, the ten that remains? What do you think they were thinking? They thought that, his, what, what, I mean, what audacity. We are 12 people here. You Two of, two of you brothers, you go see your mother. Come here with your mother. For your mother to come and tell our master that he should give you the highest position. What about us? What about us? You see, we have to be able to train our children in humility. We have to be able to train our children, taking others also into consideration. We have to be able to train our children in the way that the Lord God desires every one of us to train them up. We want good things for our children. We want to make sure that we stand and do what the Lord God has called us to do. To him alone be the glory. Happy Mother's Day. Amen.